Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another fun little code review segment. This one is a fun little code review of the new, one of the marquee new non-features of React 17. Uh, if you've checked my previous video out, giving you kind of the rundown about why React 17 is surprisingly exciting in a weird way, um, that reason is React now has better support for gradual upgrades. That meaning that you can, with React 17, it'll be easier for you to embed different versions of React on the same page, which is very useful if you are in a company that has old legacy React applications that you don't want to spend the time to upgrade. You can leave them be and embed them in the newest and greatest React 17 or plus versions. And that way of doing that may be confusing to people um, and the React core team in their endless pursuit for giving context and knowledge to everyone out there has made a actual demo of how to do these gradual upgrades, how to lazy load an older version of React if necessary. And this demo takes a new React 17 application as the base and then shows you how to lazily load a React 16 application inside of it. Um, this is what it looks like, the repo. Um, we're going to be delving into it in the code itself to find a little bit easier. But this is what the rendered code looks like itself, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, there's source modern homepage, which is this root page. Uh, you can toggle the theme context right here. This is being rendered by React 17. And then when you go to the about page, this is where you see the lazy loading of a different uh, React, a different version of React inside of a different version of React. So this is React 17 with React 16 inside of it. And the thing to note here is that uh, this demo shows how you can share context across these applicate these version boundaries. So when you change theme context here, it's changed in both locations. When you increment a counter outside, it propagates inside and vice versa. So you have the same single source of truth that's shared across every version of your application. So if you have some, you know, logged in user context, you want to make sure it is kept consistent. You can do that fine. So this is the code. Let's jump to the code itself. Okay. Here is the code. I cloned it out locally so I could a run it and show it to you, but also I find it easier to kind of go through the code tour with my VS code set up here. Um, this readme is lovely. Uh, in point of fact, I have read it more than once before making this video just to make sure I give you the right information. Um, but hopefully this video will serve as a oral dictation of what the contents of this is because there's a lot of words in here. Um, it is a mostly normal create react application. You can see here that it's using react scripts, which is what you use for create react app. I still can't get over how smart VS code is. That's an aside, but you kind of see there's all these like fancy little scripts here. So it's a, it's a vanilla create react application, which is important to note to show that this way of doing this embedding of react versions can be applied to almost any setup. Um, these are, you'll see why these exist in a second. You have the source folder, you have your uh, index file, which is the entry, which is going to modern. Um, to be clear, uh, modern is the, ver is the React 17 version of code. Modern is React 17, legacy is React 16, and shared exists to show how you can share components with both versions. Here we're making a vanilla Redux store, storing the most sensitive of all data, a counter. <laughs> um, the modern application looks by and large as you would expect. You have here a very, I would say, common entry index file, you know, strict mode, provider from React Redux, you have an app, strict mode, great. This is all cool. It's being rendered into the div element root. Um, stores what we saw in the root over here. Um, and then app we can load up here. And this is again, where if I go back to here, this is homepage, right? This is homepage. This is the, oh no, sorry. This is app, which is the root of the application, which is setting up some state, um, passing it to your theme context, which is another 
shared theme context, which we'll get back to in a second, but it's using React Writer, again, to show how you can just use vanilla React libraries. And it's just rendering a very vanilla React Writer application with these two routes, um, with the home page as the index and about as the slash about. Um, and this is all just code to just handle button clicks. Let's go to the home page, which again should look pretty tame because it's just a plain React application. Nothing really fancy here. It's showing that this React version is React 17, which you can see out here, right? This is the same content. And then when you go to the about page is where things get a little bit funky. So this is the about page. This is where most of our reading will come into place here. So let me see if this is still loading. So I, yes, this is still loading. Um, let's actually move this over here so we can kind of like see side by side. Uh, the about page is loading, you know, source about page right here. The component is being rendered by the outer React version here, React version, which is 17. Um, and then here you can see this greeting component, which is this, which is the, the legacy greeting with React 16. And here you can see it's being lazy loaded uh, with lazy legacy root. And this is where some of the magic of this demo comes from. So this API is written like react.lazy. I'm not exactly sure why react.lazy isn't used yet. I have a question out to Dan who wrote the uh, demo code because I'm not sure if there's a restriction around the version of it. Um, it may just because this gives you more control over how you load late, how you load legacy files. If you want to kind of make your own bespoke react.lazy for your application, uh, this might be why they're doing this to kind of show you how you can do it yourself. But everything in here outside of greeting is pretty vanilla. Counter, it's, it's React code. So let's look inside this greeting component, which is using, which is being returned from this lazy legacy root, which is found in here. And this is where we can start talking about things. Oops, that was a bad paste. So here we're not, we're importing the standard things that you would, as you would expect. Um, this lazy legacy root is getting a function handler, which is, you can see in here, this is being passed in a function, which returns a async import statement to make a code split bundle with Webpack or any other bundler. And what's being returned from this function, so let me just copy and paste this here because I think having the uh, example in the same page makes for a lot easier reading. Thanks. Right like this, right? So this lazy legacy route, this get legacy component is this function, right? And what's being returned from this function is this wrapper component. And this, essentially this lazy legacy route is almost exactly the same behavior as react.lazy, but you'll see why they're maybe not using react.lazy. Because what you see in here is inside the components being returned from this function is this other component. This is a functional component. And what it's doing is, oh boy. So I'm ignoring this for now because I'm gonna get back to this in a second, but we have this read module. This read module is a little helper function down here. And as you can see the note here, this is similar to react.lazy, um, but implemented manually. And in case you didn't know, the way that react.lazy works is that when you, and this works with any promise really, but when you call react.lazy, inside it's saying, uh, so read module, whoops, is being used up here and render a module. This is state, which we'll get back to in a second, but the second function, the second argument is essentially similar. It's a function that returns an async import statement, just like here. And what these two things are, what, what these two things are trying to lazy load is one, this legacy root, and then two, this legacy component. So this legacy component, again, is this up here. And this legacy root, I'll get back to in a second. But this is essentially emulating React.lazy. And what React.lazy does is this 
create promise because this import statement is a is a promise underneath the hood if it sees that the promise is not yet fulfilled so when it, a promise has states it has fulfilled rejected and pending so when you first create a promise it's pending because it doesn't know its final state yet it could go pending it could either to rejected or to fulfilled when there's no promise uh, it creates that it calls that function to return that promise over here right that's the same right this let me just make sure that you keep things in context because I think things are very confusing when they don't have the examples in place right so this create promise right equals this right so this is being called here to return this import statement being called which is a promise and then this is the value where it's trying to lazy load this module. And if it sees that uh, the, it waits for the promise to be, so there's handling inside the then function, but if you look all the way down here, you can kind of see this fun little thing where it'll actually throw the promise. I'm not gonna get too deep into the woods in this, but this is React kind of abusing how promises work in JavaScript where if, you throw a promise inside of react.lazy, uh, you throw the promise, it'll bubble up, and React will catch it and know to wait to, it'll wait to render the component where that thrown promise originates from, which is a um, long way of saying that in this greeting, it's trying to lazy load that component, this is gonna be, it's gonna throw a promise and React is actually going to wait to render this about page until this resolves, which is react.lazy. Hopefully I got that right. I'm sure someone will tell me I'm wrong in the comments because that's the fun of these videos. Um, so ignoring react.lazy, uh, this is where I imagine it's not just using vanilla react.lazy where it's actually making subscriptions to these contexts for the uh, contexts that are being used and shared across both React versions. So this is the theme context, React router context, React Redux context. And then here it's doing some pretty vanilla things here. But the important thing to know is, oh, how do I even explain this? So we have create legacy route root, which is here. So let's actually jump to here. because I think this might be a thing to take a shadow of. This is in legacy, legacy, create legacy root. And this is essentially the flip side of the lazy legacy route. Um, <laughs> what this is doing is being called here. It's essentially returning, this is what actually calls and renders the different version of React inside of the newer version. So this is where this react.dom within legacy is referencing React 16. So this is React is React 16. If you go into these folders, you can see there's different package JSONs in both. This is React 16. In modern, the package JSON is React 17, which you kind of have to do to you know, support both versions. So it might require some changes in your code base to support that. But this create legacy root is returning an object with two methods, render and unmount. So if you look in here, uh, we can see this being called here. Um, and then this root ref is root ref is essentially calling render to actually render that React 16 version inside of it. And then this bridge components inside of this file as well. And this is kind of the uh, sibling to lazy legacy root where this is subscribing to the context in React 17 land, uh, rendering it container ref. Uh, essentially this is going to context, where is this being used, context, ah, here. So it's being passed into React 16, remember there. So this, all these contexts are being passed inside of there. And this context is being passed into this bridge component. And this is kind of, this is like a weird, it's context via props because this context is being used by this bridge component up here to recreate those, con those um, context providers within React 16. So you can see here, theme context, writer context, React Redux provider. Um, this is kind of a yin and yang because this is setting up the subscriptions in React 17 where the source lives and essentially 
passing it through to React 16 such that they can also subscribe to those changes as well. So that when a in the child and here in greeting, when you actually increment the store here, when you dispatch, it will change the React Redux store and cause propagation to work as normal because this is subscribing to the React context, which means that this will re-render and be, due to these um, use layout effects, this not update, when this is when this effect happens due to the context being changed, it'll pass through the new values into there, causing the UI to stay in sync with all the data. Blah. Hopefully that made sense, but you have a parent context that you're passing into the child context and just kind of making a bridge to sync those two. Um, the, the efforts you go through to make sure you don't have to upgrade your legacy code, uh, which frankly, um, this small effort, which the React core team has done for us is probably less time in some than just upgrading all those changes. And then the third part of this demo is this shared folder, which is the clock, theme context. And what's interesting about this is that the way that this repo is set up is that when you install uh, and start building on this, when you actually watch, so when you, when you start, it's gonna watch all things, it's actually gonna copy all the files and shared into both legacy and modern. So if I, start this up again you can check in here legacy and modern let me refresh it to make sure uh, if i hit start you're going to see the shared folder pop in and i get this nice little pop-up because create react app does that and the reason for that it's like when you're in uh the app you can see that it's calling uh shared slash theme context from the modern folder and the reason for that is because both all these shared components are referencing React, but that version is ambiguous. There's no way for the application to know if you're referencing React 16 or 17. Like you can't just go into here and do um, dot dot. If I do, you know, you go down, down to the shared folder. Um, you're building this into the React 17 version in, in modern. You actually have to at least in this version, copy it into both so that you have a different version of each component that is using different React versions themselves, which is a weird gotcha, which I wouldn't really think about, um, but one that I'm sure you'd be annoyed about and cause some weird conflicts in it. Um, but that's kind of the demo. That's that's kind of like when you click in here, it's dispatching and collecting this update and things just work by and large. You, know, you can use this code, modify it to your needs to have this set of working at your own company. Um, but that's, that's, that's React 17. That, that is the big feature here, which you now have support to do. Uh, you don't have to worry about updating your code to work with new versions, updating your tests, which is probably sometimes even more annoying than anything else. Um, just works. So that's the code walkthrough of how to do gradual upgrades with React 17. Hopefully you found that interesting. It's, it's weird. It's a very, uh, legacy, uh, oriented, approach to building applications, but that's the whole point of React 17 is how to support older versions of React 17, uh, of React. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that walkthrough. Um, it was a weird mix of both things that I think you already know and things that are just new and wonky. But the thing to remember is you have, you know, a bridge between the two React lands that you can then embed things inside of. That's the video, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask below in the comments. I'll be sure to try to explain and elucidate you as best as I can. If you're not already a subscriber, become one for more videos such as these. Uh, I will see you again in the next video when it drops. Until then, keep coding and stay coding. See ya.